السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان اللعين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الذي كان موجودا قبل حدوث الأشياء ويبقى بعد فناء الأشياء تفرد بالأولية والقدم ووسم كل شيء ما عداه بالفناء والعدم كما قال عز شأنه كل شيء هالك إلا وجهه وكل نفس ذائقة الموت وقال كل من عليها فان ويبقى وجه ربك ذو الجلال والإكرام والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنام سيدنا ونبينا ومولانا أبي القاسم محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين واللعنة الدائمة على أعدائهم أجمعين من الآن إلى يوم الدين أما بعد فقد قال الله في كتابه الكريم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ولله العزة ولرسوله وللمؤمنين صلوات In the light of Dua Makarim al Akhlaq, we are discussing the high levels of Islamic manners. Akhlaq, manners in Islam, are part of your faith, your religion. If you are a mu'min, a believer, your akhlaq should be a good akhlaq, an Islamic akhlaq, your manners, your behavior. So you should know the ethical values of your own religion and you should follow them. If you don't practice your religion and you don't have akhlaq, you cannot claim to be a believer, a mu'min. Because Iman and Amal Salih go together always. So this is what has been emphasized in Quran and in the teachings of Ahlul Bayt always. Your faith should be with your own good character, your practice of what you believe in. And as we said that the Prophet himself has said, إِنَّمَا بُعِثْتُ لِأُتَمِّمَ مَكَارِمَ الْأَخْلَاقِ The Prophet was sent. He is saying why I was sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for guidance, yes. But originally, لِأُتَمِّمَ مَكَارِمَ الْأَخْلَاقِ So that I can complete the heights of akhlaq. Akhlaq is the central point of our life. <clears throat> and akhlaq is what? Just your behavior. How you talk, how you speak, how you deal with people. Your akhlaq. Without akhlaq, there is no iman. And imam is speaking about akhlaq. In his dua. And as you discuss so far, every time we discuss one sentence in which Imam is asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give him this, what? This manner, this part of the ethical uh, excellence. Today, we are moving to a new paragraph that Imam is starting with as usual with salawat 
آن اللہ صلی اللہ سو ہی سینگ اللہ صلی اللہ محمد و آلہ و اللہ بلیس محمد ان ہز پروجنی ولا ترفعنی فی الناس درجتا سیدہ کی in your akhlaq is your humbleness this is the start of your akhlaq and this is the real um, you know way how you can demonstrate your akhlaq through your humbleness this is the best way to show that you are you have good manners humbleness and the thing that can ruin your akhlaq is takabbur and uh, in previous paragraph imam had asked several things and everything when he was asking which was positive for his akhlaq he's asking refuge from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the negative side of that particular uh, akhlaq and behavior. He is asking to give us the tawfiq of worshipping, but not with ujub, with self-praising that, okay, look, see, I pray, I do this, I do this. The same thing, ma'ali al-akhlaq with no takabur, with no arrogance and pride. And let me do good, but not with mentioning it to people and making them obliged to that, uh, you know, my favors. So everything lays on one ground. And the ground is your humbleness. And the thing that can ruin your goodness is your takabur. No matter what you do good. One thing can ruin your goodness, your, your uh, good deeds, is your takabbur. Is your salat, your fasting, your hajj, your uh, helping people, your charity, whatever you do good in your life, one thing can ruin everything. And that one thing is your feeling that you are something and you are doing something and you are proud of that and you feel yourself higher than other people, superior than other people and you consider other people lower than you. And this is a really a disease that can <coughs> uh, can damage the life of your iman and akhlaq. The disease is takabur. Shaitan had done a lot of good. Nobody can reach to his worship in count, of course. Nobody can pray as much as he, he had done it. The sajda, the ruku, salat, and everything. And even after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala expelled him, he asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give him some respite and said, if you spare me from doing sajda to Adam, I will keep doing sajda to you all my life. Allah said, I don't need your sajda. I need you to bow down for Adam. He said, I cannot do that. Why? Because. See what he said? Because. He gave the reason. His reason was this. <coughs> you created me out of fire and you created him uh, out of clay. Earth. Earth is lower than 
uh, the fire. Fire goes up and earth goes down. So he is lower than me. I'm higher than him. This was his own wrong logic, of course. Uh, but still, he, he, his logic was that he is higher than him. So the one who is higher, he should not bow down to, to one who is lower than him. So Adam is lower than me. I'm better than him. I'm, I'm higher than him. So this takabur actually invalidated all his good deeds that he has done so far. <coughs> and this made him shaitan. Otherwise, he was not shaitan. He was Iblis. You know, I have talked about it many times that people say, why Allah created shaitan? Allah did not create shaitan at all. No, no. It's wrong. Allah created Iblis. He was Iblis. Apparently, in the beginning, he was a good person. <coughs> That's why Allah raised him to the level of angels. See, he was sitting uh, among angels. But what made him shaitan? He was not shaitan in the beginning. He was Iblis. His name is Iblis. His name is not shaitan. Shaitan is his quality, his you know, the word shaitan is not noun, it is adjective. Not, um, you know, proper noun, I mean. It is adjective. Which means he has a quality to become a shaitan. He became shaitan. How he became shaitan? He became shaitan after refusing the sajda to Adam, considering him lower than him. So this can happen to any of us, anywhere. See, there's a hadith. Don't consider anybody among yourself lower than you because you don't know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has hidden his awliya, his wali among the mu'mineen. You don't know who is Allah's friend, Allah's wali, close to Allah. You have no idea. And you, if you humiliate him, if you disrespect him, if you insult someone, you, you might insult someone who is close to Allah and you don't know. So respect every mu'min. Of course, when you respect a mu'min, then there, there is a criteria given by Quran itself. Among mu'mineen, there are some people who are more, more respectful. They should be given more respect than others. Based on what? They have more money. They are more famous people. They are more, more, more popular among people. They have more power in this world. No. None of these. The only thing that makes a person more respectable is only one thing and it is in akramakum in the lahi atqaqum if you know if you really need respect not from people people can respect anyone people respect fir'aun people respect you know namrud people respect saddam people respect all the oppressors respect them not about people what is the Criterion said by Quran. What Quran says? In akramakum, the most honorable in the eyes of Allah among you is the one who is more pious. So taqwa is the criterion. Be muttaqi. And taqwa has grades, levels. Better muttaqi, more muttaqi, more muttaqi. And taqwa, see, taqwa means. Fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in your behavior. This fear doesn't come without ilm, knowledge. Knowledge makes you muttaqi. And this is what Quran also saying about it. إِنَّمَا يَخْشَ اللَّهَ مِنْ عِبَادِهِ الْعُلَمَاءِ Only ulama fear Allah among people. إنما يخشى الله من عباده الله has all everybody is عباد الله 
So Ibadullah, among Ibadullah, among the people who are servant of Allah, who are subject to Allah, who are created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, among these people, only. Quran says, innama, only. That's it. No exception. Only ulama, only those people who have knowledge. Ulama doesn't mean the people who have, you know, wearing this uh, dress of ulama. No, ulama means anybody who has more ilm, he has more taqwa. Ilm and taqwa go together. So as you increase your knowledge about Islam, you become more pious and muttaqi. That's why ulama should be more muttaqi. Taqwa with alim is something that cannot be separated. An alim without taqwa cannot be an alim at all. And as I said earlier, that see, taqwa is a quality that should be always combined with your iman. Iman and taqwa, akhlaq, the same thing. Taqwa cannot be separated from, you know, from a mu'min. A mu'min should be muttaqi. An alim should be muttaqi. Even a marja should be muttaqi. When you say uh, those conditions of, of, of a marja, first condition is ilm and the second is adil. Adil means muttaqi. He should be muttaqi. A mu'min should be muttaqi. So taqwa is important. And when you see a a mu'min muttaqi, you have to respect him. Alim, you should respect him more because he has ilm, more ilm, more taqwa. Unless an alim, you know he has, he doesn't have taqwa. But what is taqwa for an alim? How can you judge me as a taqwa? Tell me. You say, I don't like this Molana. Why? Because he's not good with me. Maybe he's not good with you. He's, he's supposed to be good with all mu'mineen. Yes, he's supposed to be. But he is a human being. Something happened yet that you didn't like from him. It is possible, right? Something can happen that you don't like from me. So now you say, I don't like him because I don't like him. Why don't like him? Because I don't like him. Because he just did this to me and I, I don't like him. This is not the criteria for liking a person or a mu'min or an alim. The criteria is only one. Is he a muttaqi? Taqwa? Does he have a taqwa? Or he is doing some sin openly among people? If he is a sinner, no, no, no. He is not an alim. Don't even talk about him. We don't like. And those ulama who are not muttaqi, who are sinners, astaghfirullah, whose aqidah or amal is not correct, they are worse than anyone in this world. Worse people are those ulama who are not muttaqi. And best people are those ulama who have taqwa. But the taqwa is not you. Not you the criteria to judge, to judge somebody's taqwa. I like him. I don't like him. He's not good with me. He is good with me. He's very good alim. Why? Because he is good with me. I have good relations you know, with him. He's not a good alim because I don't like him. So you are not the criteria. Criteria is Allah, Quran, and Ahlul Bayt, and Islam, and Deen, and religion. If he is following his religion, <coughs> he's a good alim, and you have to respect him. If you don't respect him, there is hadith, kun aliman aw muta'alliman أو محبا لأهل العلم. Be one of these three. And if you be the fourth one, you will, you will be perished. You will become halak. If you want to uh, protect yourself from from halaka, you have to be what? Either an alim yourself, or a student of an alim, or محبا. Or you should be lover of an alim and a student. Don't be the fourth one. Otherwise, you will be perished. Ulama should be respected. And taqwa is the criteria for uh, respecting the ulama. And the criteria is, is not ourselves. We like, we don't like. It is all 
from Quran and Ahadith and Ahlul Bayt. And this disrespecting a mu'min is haram. How about disrespecting an alim? So what happens originally? Remaining in our topic, see what Imam is saying here. The time is almost over. So we were trying to discuss this sentence, what Imam said. Remember it. لا ترفعني في الناس الدرجة This is a problem. All of us should control ourselves here. Oh Allah, don't raise me in status, in respect. Don't raise my respect among people. درجة one level. Respect has levels. You respect him. You respect him more and him maybe more and him maybe more. So respect has darajat, levels. Oh Allah, don't raise me in respect among people one level. إلا حطتني عند نفسي مثلها. الله أكبر. It needs hours and hours of discussion. Unless you lower me myself down. Don't raise me up unless you, unless you lower me down in the nafsi to myself exactly the same amount that you are raising me. So if you raise me one level up in the nas, among people, people start you know, respecting me more. Right? I was just a member in the committee. Next year, I became a president. People started respecting me more. See, I became a chairman, became a trustee, more, more and more. So as, oh Allah, you're raising me in status and respect more, don't raise me. I don't want this. Unless what? Lower me down within my own self, the same amount as you are raising me among people. Why? Because this balance can keep you a muttaqi, taqwa. Without this, you cannot remain a muttaqi. You will lose everything. Why? Because as you get respect among people, and one daraja, one level is raised, that Fir'aun, that everybody has in, inside him, he gets, you know, he, he wakes up, sleeping. Why? Because I don't have anything. But as I get some power, that wakes up. More power, gets stronger. More power, stronger, and until he becomes real Fir'aun, he, he was the Fir'aun. Fir'aun was not born Fir'aun. He became Fir'aun after he getting the power. So power make a person Fir'aun. In order to not be a Fir'aun, what you need to do? Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this sentence. Oh Allah, if people are respecting me, let me myself be so humble within myself so I know who am I. Why people are respecting me? I should not become a Fir'aun. I should not start using my power against deen, against Islam, against religion, against uh, those who are serving the religion. I should not do that. Why? Because if I am really muttaqi, I'm a mu'min. And that's why. See, I will stop here. And this is a great message for you all, the mu'minin of Chicago especially today. We should learn from the history. We should learn from what's happening around. Taqwa, without taqwa, a person can become Fir'aun. So if someone becomes a chairman of IEC, for example, or a trustee of an IEC, or an alim of IEC, he had the power now. With this, he is using this power instead of serving people against people. Instead of respecting people, disrespect, you know, you know, humiliating people, disrespecting people, using his power. So this is kind of that arrogance.
arrogance that he has inside. Why? Because he doesn't have taqwa. That is why. There is a clear message from Quran for all of us who want to become something in any Islamic center. Want to hold a position. Not position. Go work for, for Allah. Fi sabilillah. Be humble. And always have fear that may Allah, you know, it is up to Allah to accept or reject your, your services. Right? About what should be proud, about what you should be arrogant, about what you should feel about, you know, power. What power? So Quran says very clearly. And remember it. And memorize it. It's simple one word. And I have mentioned this many times and I will keep repeating it so that you can memorize it. In Surah Anfal, we just read it last two weeks ago. For the masjid, for the house of Allah, for center, it applies everywhere. For Imam Bargah, for anything that belongs to Allah and Imam and the community, if you want to become an officer there, hold an office in any place that belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not you yourself, you are not the owner of IEC, are you? Nobody. The Tursis are not owner of IEC, they are servants of IEC. But not every person can become a trustee. No. What Quran says? In awliya'uhu illa al muttaqun remember it what is it in awliya'uhu illa al muttaqun two words awliya is the plural of wali which means mutawalli nobody can become a mutawalli of any islamic center of course the ayat is speaking about masjid al haram kaaba that masjid in high level, but in lower situation, our center also is house of Allah. It belongs to Allah, it's not our. We are not the owner of this center. Allah is the owner, Rasul is the owner, Imam is the owner. In the absence of Imam, Marja is the owner. So, eh, who can become the mutawalli? Quran says, In awliya'uhu illa al muttaqun. Only a person who is muttaqi, who has taqwa, he can become a mutawalli. He can become a president, he can become a trustee, he can become a member of executive board. He can become only if he is muttaqi. This is the criteria. If he is not muttaqi, he cannot hold any position in any Islamic center. Why? Because without taqwa, the risk of becoming a fir'aun is there. He, he needs to be real khadim, real volunteer of mu'minin. And unfortunately, when we uh, bring this politics in the centers, this happens what is happening around us. And we have to say something, we have to speak clearly, we have to be vocal, uh, because... It is a responsibility of all mu'mineen when they see that now it is a situation when any Islamic center is in danger, is at, at a risk of being ruined, of, of being perished, then we all have to come forward to save the center, not for politics. Please don't come for politics, for saving Islamic center for the saving the respect of Islamic center, respect of mu'mineen and respect of ulama. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq to fulfill our responsibilities in this time of ghaybat of Imam Zaman Ajrullah Farajahu Shaykh. In the Hadith wa Ablaq al-Mu'ad al-Kitab Allah, A'udhu Billahi min ash-shaytan al-Rajim, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, wa al-Asr inna al-Insan al-Fi khusr illa al-Ladhina amanu wa amilu al-Salihat, wa tawasaw bil-Haqq wa tawasaw bil-Sabr.